So what are FODMAP foods and why should you care? This matters if you deal with a lot of digestive issues, if you deal with irregular bowels, if you deal with a lot of pain, bloating, cramping, those types of symptoms, then this might be really helpful for you to know about. If you don't deal with these things, then you probably don't need to know and you can move on. But these are carbohydrates which ferment in the gut and they're just very particular carbohydrates that we do not digest well. So most people aren't gonna digest these well, but most people, but some people have a really difficult time digesting them and it can completely mess with your bowels, it can give you diarrhea, it can give you constipation, and all sort of digestive distress. The reason why I started to pay attention to these foods maybe a year or so ago was I had all these foods that were giving me digestive upset, but they didn't really fall into one category. I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And these are foods that you can't really like read a food label and figure out that they have FODMAPs in it. So it's a huge list of foods. I can't just list them all out here for you, but you can find them online pretty simply by looking up high FODMAP foods. But it can be anything from apples to blackberries to milk, basically most types of lactose, um, fruit tans, which are in a lot of foods with gluten, um, wheat products, a whole variety, cashews, pistachios, so you've got nuts on there, you have avocado on there, you've got fruits, vegetables. It's possible if a lot of these foods bother you that you could have IBS. And IBS come in, comes in forms of issues with diarrhea, constipation, a mix between them both, or even the unclassified, which doesn't fall neatly into any category, but you just still deal with a lot of these symptoms. So this diet is typically what is used to help people who have IBS to deal with some of those issues. There's a particular way of going through it. It's a little bit more complicated than just avoid all these foods forever. Luckily, you don't have to necessarily avoid these foods forever, but um, these are helpful to know about. If you have a bunch of those types of symptoms that you haven't been able to figure out and you've never been diagnosed with IBS, something that you might want to look into a little bit more about the criteria for being diagnosed, a doctor, gastroenterologist, can help you with this. Quite often too, celiac disease can be misdiagnosed as IBS. So sometimes people who are having IBS symptoms might actually have celiac or they might even have something like IBD. So a lot of this stuff overlaps. It's not simple um, to diagnose or to manage, but I just sort of wanted to shed a little bit of light on some of these foods that could be part of your problem with digestive issues that maybe you've never thought about before. Like I had never even considered this until a few years ago. So something you might wanna look into more. Um, and if you want to know more about this, let me know and I can do more posts about it.